Hey guys, Alexander here, and in this video I will be proving to you that the sum of independent normal random variables is itself a normal random variable with a mean equal to the sum of the individual means and variance equal to the sum of the individual variances. So let's start off with our constituent normal random variables. If x this bit is normal with a mean of mu1 and a variance of sigma squared 1, and we let y be distributed as normal with the mean mu2 and the variance of sigma squared 2, and we say that x and y are independent, are independent, then we are interested in what is the distribution What is the distribution of x plus y? So I'm going to first tell you that x plus y it will be distributed normally with a mean of mu1 plus mu2 and it will have a variance of sigma squared 1 plus sigma squared 2. And how do we go about showing this? Well, we're going to be using the moment generating function. So let's recall in the previous video, I proved to you that the moment generating function of a normally distributed random variable is given by e to the mu t plus a half sigma squared t squared. And in this case, since x is distributed normally with a mean of mu1 and the variance of sigma1 squared, let's put, put the, them in here, 1 and 1, and 5y of t is going to be equal to e to the mu2t plus a half sigma2 squared t. So we are interested in what is 5x plus y of t? Well, we know that this is simply going to be 5x of, phi x of t multiplied by 5y of t. And the reason for this is because if we have the sum of independent random variables, the moment generating function for the sum of independent random variables is simply the product of the individual ones. So phi x of t times phi y of t. And we know that this is going to be equal to e to the mu1 t plus a half sigma1 squared t squared multiplied by e to the mu2 t plus a half sigma2 squared t squared. And we can simplify this to be e to the mu1 plus mu2 t plus a half times sigma1 squared plus sigma2 squared t squared. And there's a particularly important uh, property of a moment generating function, and that is that an MGF uniquely determines the distribution. That means if we can find a particular moment generating function that is valid, then that moment generating function will be uniquely associated to that particular distribution. And since we can see that this moment generating function over here is still of the form of a normal, since we have some mean multiplied by t and some variance multiplied by half t squared over here, then we know that this is the moment generating function. This is the MGF for a normal random variable. In particular, it is the MGF for a random variable that is normally distributed with a mean of mu1 plus mu2 and a variance of sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared. And that's how we go about 
proving that the sum of independent normal random variables is normal itself by using the moment generating function approach. And this places emphasis on some important aspects. If you have two independent uh, sets of populations that are distributed normally, and you need to go find out the probabilities that the sum of these two populations, or the total, the group thing of these two populations, is less than and equal to a certain value. We need to first find what is the distribution that characterizes the total population, which is the sum of these independent normally distributed populations. So we need to know that the sum of independent normals will, st will still be distributed normally, and they will simply have a mean, which is the sum of the individual or the constituent normal distributions, and the variance will also simply be the sum of the constituent uh, variances. And that's that. It's as simple as that. And if we know the moment generating function, then we can easily prove it. And the important property of the moment generating function is that it uniquely determines the distribution. So if you have a certain moment generating function of this of a certain particular form like this, this is will be the moment generating function characteristically associated with a normally distributed random variable. That's that for this video. Thank you very much for watching the series on the normal distribution. This concludes all the theoretical and proving parts of the normal distribution. And if there is demand for it, I will produce a set of exercise examples for the normal distribution that you guys can go and practice. Boer Commander, out. <laughs>